Okay, today, today we're uh, changing the hydraulic filter on Oliver 1755. This would be the same on a 1855, 1955, 2255. Uh, first thing you do is take this shield off that Alan has here in his hands, and that's pretty straightforward. Just little screws around the edge. Then you can see your filter. Chances are your tractor doesn't even have that shield on it anyways, because guys would get tired of taking it off to change your filter. Now one thing you want to be ready with is enough buckets because the hydraulic system on these is gravity fed. And so when you take the bottom off this filter housing, everything in the reservoir is gonna come out. So then you just get your wrench on the bottom there and spin that just like Alan's doing there. Oil will start coming out. There'll be a rubber gasket between the part Allen spinning and the canister. We can show that in a moment. Now you could pump your hydraulic system down beforehand by just sticking a hydraulic hose in one of the remotes and uh, putting the other end in a bucket, pumping it down. But as soon as you hear air hitting that pump, you'll know it. It makes a lot of noise. Shut that tractor off because these pumps do not like air going through them. Or you can pump three or four gallons out. But you should have two five gallon buckets is gonna be enough to get it. I don't think one is, oh, it came off. there we go. Well, it doesn't pour out as fast as I was remembering. Or he's low on hydraulic oil. <laughs> There's the filter housing. There's a seal on top, and then that big spool goes through the middle. If you push that through, it come out. Which way is it going? It's probably just this rubber seal up here that's holding it. Might have to take an O-ring pick or something and try to pick that seal out of the top because it's just it's like a spring. The, yeah, them threads are well. There is a spring in there, and the threads are grabbing against this rubber right here. So let's. I'll stop for a moment. And we'll get an O-ring pick and pick that out. Okay, we found an O-ring pick. Alan's a. Trying to get that seal out of there. Working it. There we go. Almost got it. There we go. Now it should slide out of there. Like that. Get a new get. Uh, you should come with a new uh, rubber gasket that goes on the bottom there. There's your filter, and then there's also a seal on the bottom, just like on the top. And you might have heard the clank, but inside the canister there, crud there. Um, inside the canister down here. First thing you want when you put it back together is a spring in this washer, which I guess we can show reassembling it. Those are the parts of your filter housing. Okay, I got a brand new filter here. Um, there's a part number, in case you were wondering. 3302-4725, includes a new filter. Uh, the O-ring that goes on the bottom, the O-ring that goes on the top. This one is for the head of the filter. We'll just take it right on over here. Goes right in that groove right there. We haven't picked the old one out, but there's a new one. It's a good idea to change it. And another thing is to grease it up some, and that'll make the can come off a lot easier when you go to do it. If you put this rubber in there dry and put that can against it, somehow or another they just bond together and it makes that Makes that can a real bear to pull off in there next time you change oil. And then uh, it also came with a 
new rubber that goes under the bottom there. It's pretty straightforward. Clean up the can and stuff. That's what Alan's doing right now. Get everything nice and clean. And we'll show reassembly here in a second. Okay, we're ready to reassemble the hydraulic filter. We've got the bottom seal almost all the way down. Just a little more and that goes there. Then we put the canister on. Then the spring goes in. That just slides down. Then the washer. Then one of these two seals, they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one. Push that down in there. Then put the seal in. I'm sorry, this, the filter in. That doesn't matter which side is up. So, and then the, uh, the remaining seal goes on top there. You'll wanna, you can kinda hold this filter down against the uh, spring pressure and work it down a little bit, get that seal down so some threads are showing. So when you go to put it on the tractor, you got something to, to engage without fighting it so much. Okay, now we'll take her around and put her on. Okay, one thing you wanna do when you're putting it on is some guys will over tighten. And what happens is the bottom of this canister gets dished in and then it won't seal up right. They try to tighten it more, it just distorts more. They get all upset. It doesn't take, just snug it up a little. That's all it takes. Um, it's not running under much of any pressure. Uh, just gravity is the only pressure against it at this point. So it, it doesn't take a lot to tighten it or a lot of tightening to make it work right. Okay, we're gonna put the filter back on. Apparently um, this tractor was a little low on hydraulic oil than I thought, so we didn't get a whole lot out, but if you're right up to the full, you're gonna get a few gallons. Looks like Alan's got it started all right. Now all he needs is uh, crescent wrench is plenty enough, because once again, don't want to over tighten it. Yeah, turn it that way. You'll see it pull up onto the seal up on the top there. Yep, that's it. You'll feel it give a little extra resistance once it gets to that top lip and stops moving. And that's just, that's a good time to stop when you feel suddenly more solid. This is pretty much the same procedure on a, well, like a white 2105, 285. Those are identical. Uh, 288, 2110, uh, 2135, 2155, 2180. Some of the other bigger whites, and even a lot of the newer ones. Same basic setup, other than the hydraulic oil is your in your rear end. That looks good. Thank you. Um, so you're not gonna have the whole system drain when you take the filter out. Only the oil that's gonna come out on those bigger, newer tractors is just what's in the filter housing itself. So you know, a couple of quarts or something, five gallon pail is definitely gonna catch everything you're gonna drop out of it. Now we're gonna replace another hydraulic line so we're not gonna bleed out the filter right at this time, but don't forget that bleeder up there. You're, yep, right there. Just turn it out a little bit and and but you gotta fill up the oil first, but let it go until uh, the bubble stop and got a good steady stream of oil and then uh, should be ready to start your tractor up. Top it off before you do. I uh, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Just a little example of what we're going through here. Alan's trying to, this, the plastic on these boots, these cheap ones, it's just like turn almost to like Lego brick hard and they do not want to pop off we're having to cut them with a knife and even then my knife ain't the sharpest but it's just it, every one of them has been a bear uh, original ones that have been on tractors for a couple of decades they still just they might break but they pop right off i've never had them go like this before I, lesson learned i will not buy the cheap injector boots ever again